いいから。して。I love this anime. I really, really love this anime. Seriously, this is the hottest best girl entire year. Literally set the whole bar for every best girl this year alone. So, watching so many isekais, and I mean a lot of isekai, transported to another world in a fantasy world, just reincarnated, and my favorite in a fantasy world with no superpowers but the power of intellect. It's nice to find an anime that is refreshing, or rather, it takes me back to the types of anime that I watched and I enjoyed as a child, discovering the wonders and joys that anime brings. Isekai Ningyo ni Koisuru, which literally translates into I love this dress up doll, or better known in the community as Dress Up My Darling, is that anime that really takes me back to the classic animes that I started to watch when I was young. Honestly, I could try to go through all the hoops and loops about the story and the plot and attempt to hide the fact that I'm just a pure degenerate who is just simply crushing over Kitagawa and everything Kitagawa. But I'm, I'm not going to do that. The main reason you should watch this is because of Kitagawa. That is all. But I mean, you don't have to take my word from it. Just go on any Facebook or any anime poll website and just look at Kitagawa dominating the top of the history of poll of best girl in the year of best girl. But honestly, there should not be a single person who would not want a Kitagawa. Like literally, Kitagawa is the number one ideal girlfriend. This whole world should just be Kitagawa. And I'm not really going to take that back, even though that sounds cringy of saying it. But she's definitely the girl that you definitely want in your life. Think about it. One, she's hot. Okay, and the anime just shows how hot she is all the time. Then on top of that, she's direct. So you always know what she's thinking and she's never afraid to tell you how she's feeling and when she's feeling. Then she's a gairu. So she's a hot gairu. So everything she says is cute and hot. But then also she's an otaku. So she's a hot otaku. And when she's not fangirling over her favorite character and drooling over him, she's just coming to your house and just stripping butt naked and not understanding that there's a boundary as the guy's probably getting the boner right now. And when she's not being naked and crossing boundaries, she's either just flipping her boobs up and down, which honestly, yeah, the boob physics is, is good in this. Come on, we haven't seen this since high school DX. I mean, high school to dead. Oh, wow. Okay, this is simple mathematics. You like anime? Cool. You like anime girls? Cool. You like anime that tries to hide the fact that it's borderline hentai, but you still watch it so your friends don't think you're a pervert? Cool. Seriously, this girl is possibly everything that a guy could want. Direct, straightforward, ambitious, engaging, hot, wears sexy lingerie and doesn't really care. The only thing that she didn't really do in this anime is come into reality so the League of Weeaboos with me in the front lines could worship her like the trash we are. Kita Gawa's personality and character interactions are superb and translates directly to the person that she is. She might truly have set the bar for the best girl this year alone. I think this year, if we see another anime girl, it will definitely be like, hmm, she's not Kita Gawa. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking that anime about a sexualized girl shaking her booty might, might be a bad anime, and it's just a smut that gives anime a bad name. <laughs> Uh, and honestly, I won't retract my original point that you should watch this anime mainly because of Kitagawa. But that's honestly not a bad one if you're thinking about it. Kitagawa isn't just awesome because she's direct or blunt. It isn't at all the sexy lingerie that she wears, but I mean, that's a real good darn reason. Kitagawa is so awesome because she does something special that I often feel is overlooked because you're staring at her. She does something that's actually quite unique, and I would like to see more of it not only in anime, but in real life in general. She accepts the main character for who he is and all of his quirkiness. Gojo, <laughs> you wish, sadly is often overshadowed due to the overwhelming sexiness that is Marin Kitagawa. He is a character with a rather sad past. He was always expiring to be like his father, a master craftsman for the things that he loves, only to be rejected by his childhood friend and saying that his passion was weird. This caused him to hide his ability and passion from everyone and even doubt and question if he should continue doing this or not. I've definitely been in this situation before, being shunned for an ability you have even though you love it. People shunning you for said ability and you don't know whether you should keep it or not. It's something that really challenges you and you really start to understand yourself. But Kitagawa accepts him and brings to light something that he thought no one would accept or even understand. I respect Kitagawa for doing this and it is the core thing in their developing relationship. As secret oddballs of the story, they both are able to quickly adapt to each other and do all for one another. 
This is a rather simple but truly amazing relationship. I like this anime for really allowing the characters to accept and help one another. Now, honestly, Gojo is also just an infuriating character, but it's not like we don't want to see these types of characters. The anime I watched when I was younger seemed to focus on the same pattern. Main anime male who seems really cool meets hot girl and spends an episode or even episodes literally doing nothing but failing with progression. Gojo is definitely this a thousand percent as he has a girl over his house that she found on her own, by the way, and spends literally the entire episode being a flipping. But as frustrating as this was, this is what we want to see. Think about anime like Slime or SAO even, even though I don't consider it an isekai, but I'm not going to argue this right now. It's like the isekai theory is that the main character are supposed to serve to the reader as allowing the reader to immerse themselves in the world that they live in. This is why Kirito or Rimuru make absolutely no sense because you're supposed to imagine that you are these characters rather than for them to make sense. They are designed to be cool and not logical. Kisekai and other anime like this are the same way. It's not really supposed to make sense but rather to serve as the purpose of immersion. Basically, you look at Gojo and you look at Kitagawa and you are just like, bruh, if this was me right now, it's unlike Donkey Kong, just saying. Though I haven't watched many anime like this recently, I forgot how good and refreshing these types of animes are. Honestly, this anime year, well, month actually, has really been lackluster to me. But I think this is one of the animes that are one of the top of the season and probably one of the best anime of the year. I look forward to seeing more of Kojo's and Kitagawa's developing relationship, but honestly, I just want to see more of Kitagawa. Leave me alone, I'm grown. And that is the video. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, if you watch it, let me know what you think about this anime series. I do think it's absolutely amazing. If you like what I do, please leave a like and a subscribe. I'm almost at 200 subscribers. I mean, th there's two of you out there that can subscribe to this channel. With that being said, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.